Lots of young single adults sign up for online dating sites and apps and wait to see what kind of traction their profile can get. But when Hadia Rodrique didn't get the response that she was hoping for, she had a theory. She experimented with the idea of alternating between her actual pictures, pictures of a white woman pretending to be her, and a whitened version of herself, and she discovered that that made a big difference. So let's welcome her here today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Take me back to the beginning. You're a single woman. I'm a single, 30-something woman, fresh out of a relationship, mm -hmm. decided to dip into the online dating pool. And it was New Year's Eve, so I was, had a New Year's resolution mm -hmm. to find romance. Created my profile, you know, thought it was witty, put up some what I thought were good pictures, and, you know, waited for the supposed flood of messages that's supposed to happen and when that, you're a woman. And so that's the expectation. As yeah. a woman on a dating site you're, or a dating app, you're thinking, there's going to be people coming to me. Yes, and, you know, maybe a flood of messages from people you don't want, but usually you expect to be kind of bombarded when you sign up. Yeah. And I wasn't, so my first three days, you know, I got five messages and then a steady trickle of one to two messages for for the rest of the time. And at, at any point did you say, maybe my pictures aren't right, or maybe my, what, what, what? I did. What? So yeah, so you started having I, questions. I got a professional photographer to take pictures of me. I put my profile on Reddit and got people to comment. I put it up on Bun's Dating Zone and asked for feedback, and the general response was that my pictures were great mm -hmm. and my content was also great. So, so at what point did you start sort of theorizing that there could be something else afoot? I mean, I'm a black woman who's existed in Canada as a black woman for 36 years, so the question is always at the back of my mind. But you were giving it the benefit of the doubt. I you? was, okay. and, but I'm also an academic, yeah. so I decided to put it to the test. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so how did you put it to the test? You had a, 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 I sat in a coffee shop with my friend Jessica, who's yeah. also a fellow PhD student, and we're about the same height and weight and, you know, similar attractiveness, so I asked if she was willing to be my guinea pig my stand-in really? for my profile. So this is a picture of her? Yes. Okay. And so you put her face on essentially the same profile? On exactly the same profile. The, exactly the I same profile. I took my profile down. I, I made a few slight edits so it wouldn't be immediately obvious that it was the same, but mm -hmm. same contact, describing the same person. And the results were? Well, I got five messages in three days, and Hadia Blanca, as we called her, got 49 messages in three days. Now, did any of this account for, I, I don't know the numbers on these sites, but um, could that have something to do with, I don't know, you know, by and large, people date in their race, I think. They do. Um, so could that have anything to do with perhaps there being more Caucasians on the site? It is possible. Okay. Um, but when you conduct interviews with people, they generally express that, you know, they're willing to date or happy to date people outside their race, that race doesn't matter, they're yes. just looking for a person. So that's interesting to me. That is, so, so we found that, that, that people tend to say that. Do you think that they say that to make themselves more attractive or do they think that that's what people, that they need to say that? I think it's the latter. Mm -hmm. um, there is research that shows that we tend to give socially desirable answers mm -hmm. to questions. And so I think that people say one thing, but act another way behind so, the secrecy and safety of the computer. Let's go back to the experiment, because it didn't end there. It didn't. No. So what was the next step in your experiment? I knew I would get criticism or questions that perhaps, you know, maybe people just thought Jessica was cuter than me mm -hmm. or more approachable. Um, we did get the same number of views. Uh, so people would look, but they wouldn't, you know, they would look, but they wouldn't touch in so, my case. So they wouldn't engage with you? Yes. Okay. Um, and there is research that shows that people are less reluctant to engage in cross-race interaction, but if the um, person who's a minority reaches out, they're more likely to respond mm. back. So I was a person who would often send out messages, but I still wasn't getting that much response back. So, so what did you do next? I decided to make myself white to see if it was my features that were actually keeping people away. All right, so now, now you're, now you're blonde-haired yeah. and blue-eyed. <laughs> How did you do this? I'm curious. The magic of Photoshop That's... and a random app on iPhone. Real simple as that, <laughs> yeah. huh? Yeah. And then what was, so what was the reaction to the, uh, same profile? Same profile. Same profile. And what's the reaction to this one? She was the most popular of all of them. Was she She really? got 67 messages in the three days. Really? Yeah. And, and, okay, so. I make a convincing blonde, I you, think. You, 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 <laughs> listen, all the pictures are very attractive. Yeah. But my, my question is, what conclusions? You're an academic, so what sort of academic conclusions can you draw from this experiment? Uh, I think that people really are reluctant to reach out across racial divide. Um, I even had people who I had messaged as black me who wrote to white me. Really? Yeah, I had one yeah. guy that I went on a date with as my black <laughs> self who messaged to my white version. Yeah. So I think that people, um, you know, they think they're progressive mm -hmm. and maybe they're just not acting as progressively as they think they are. And if you're a person of color, mm -hmm. um, perhaps 
you know, if you're looking to meet other people of color, a specific niche site might be better. Yeah. Um, but I just think that going out into the real world and having actual exposure to people and having people have exposure to you sort of breaks down some of these stereotypes. You know, we don't have much, much more time, but I did want to ask you, how did you feel throughout this entire thing? Because you are an academic and we are sort of, we're, we're saying it with a smirk and we're smiling a little bit, but this is your life. Yeah. This is your emotions. This is, you were looking for an intimate and, and, and romantic um, connection. Uh, and instead, you had to do this experiment, and, and you sort of got boiled down to race. How did you feel through this whole thing? I mean, it's a little bit emotionally draining. Um, you'd like to think that you're being seen as a person, but this was a signal that I, that I wasn't, and that online was just not for me, and offline was more successful. And so this was in the past. Let's talk about the present. It was offline more successful. Are you in, if I, I may ask, are you I in am. Origin? I met my boyfriend on Facebook, of all places. <laughs> okay, so not exactly, <laughs> not exactly in the real dating. world. We had matched on Tinder, but we never messaged each other, and I deleted everyone on Tinder at one point, so he got lost in the fray, but... Are all the apps deleted? Oh, uh, well, I Because that's a good line of, that's, I've learned that, I've been told that that's they, a good sign of trust in a relationship. Are. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you for coming, and thank you for sharing the story. You're welcome. Thank you for having Appreciate me. It.